Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. We're coming back to Zodiac. Um, funnily enough, we're actually on the same build, um, but I did actually try to change it. What I mean by that is, um, the way that I deck build, and I've talked about this before uh, on streams and in past videos, is I don't like taking out cards and replacing them with others. Uh, I feel like that's kind of fine if you do it once, but if you do it multiple times, you end up with a Ship of Theseus kind of situation where uh, your build has been, has just loses cohesion um, because you've just been like subbing one for one so many cards in and out that it's like uh, the cards don't even like really fit well together anymore. If, if that makes any sense for kind of lack of a better explanation. But so what I did, funnily enough, is like I deleted my previous Zodiac build and rebuilt it uh, from scratch based on what I thought the deck should have um, and what I thought would be good for this current meta. And I kid you not, I landed card for card on the exact same main and extra deck. So uh, <laughs> go figure, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think it's so important to look and make sure and just check like, okay, this build is still fine and good, right? Good, yes, awesome. So uh, what do I like about this deck and this build so much? Well, actually, before I get into that, uh, I want to talk about where I think Zodiac is right now in the meta, because that's mostly why I went back for another play session with this Zodiac build. Um, there's been a decent bit of discourse about it since uh, the Barrage came back to three, and Rapier came back uh, at one, and also Dreadnought went to three. Um, there has there are two camps, from what I can tell, two very polarized camps. Uh, one is kind of saying that. Zodiac is still mid, even with these releases, and that uh, the deck will not get past like mid rogue tier at best. There are other people who say that Barrage is a mistake, that this is all a mistake, this is a ticking time bomb, this is absolutely a tier 1 deck, and if it's not, it's because people are sleeping on it. I think, as usual, the truth tends to lie somewhere in between, right? So, one of the main reasons, again, why I played this deck for another session is I wanted to see how good is this deck? How good do I think this deck is? And I think that this deck is pretty good right now, um, but I don't necessarily think it's because Barrage is too good for the format. Um, I don't think that's the case even with how good I do think this deck is. Let me just say this so that I can establish this. I think after playing Zodiac for a couple of sessions, um, and kind of seeing where it's been fitting in tournament results and how often it's been showing up in like master rank decks, so on and so forth. I think it's an upper tier three deck is where I feel confident putting it. Um, it might be lower tier two, but other decks that I consider to be tier two, like Labyrinth, uh, Vanquish Soul, um, I do think are still a decent head above Zodiac. I think Zodiac did more, honestly, for the Kashira archetype than it almost did for itself coming back, because, if anything, we've seen that this is now a much more consistent way to play Kashira, because if you brick on your Kashira stuff, in a Kashira deck, well, you were kind of fucked. And it was, it's really easy to brick on Kashira stuff when Ratesoft and Prosperity are both at one. However, with the Zodiacs, now the deck actually has something else to do uh, if you break on your Kashira stuff. Because let's be real, with the ratios uh, in this deck, and especially with playing the Desires as well, if you don't open Kashira stuff, you're going to open Zodiac stuff. And if you don't open Zodiac stuff, um, you probably opened a Unicorn or a Fenrir or Ratesoth, or otherwise you just got really, really unlucky. Um, but even then, a lot of the time, you probably still open Desires anyway. Um, Desire is a little bit iffy about, to be totally honest, just because we have one of each Rise Heart and Theosis. I have debated taking out the Desires and putting in, like, a Prosperity and a third, like, Talent or something like that. But I don't think you can actually play Prosperity in this deck, because you do actually need your entire extra deck. Uh, this is a deck that very easily has longer games. It doesn't always try for that, but it can very easily get into that kind of game state. So, your whole extra deck is going to end up mattering. Actually, to the point where I have actually uh, considered playing Pot of Avarice in this deck, uh, which was much more needed in Zodiac in the past when Dryden was at 1. Um, because, well, you only had so many plays uh, with Dryden at 1, and you needed a way to recycle them. But, 
I do still think that it might be important to be able to recycle your extra deck monsters um, in case that you have a longer game, which I've run into a couple of times. Uh, the other card I was actually thinking of playing instead of Avarice, though, and I've seen other people use this, is Zodiac Combo. Um, Zodiac Combo is pretty much a uh, pot of Avarice, except for it's only for Zodiac cards, uh, and you only draw one by banishing this card from the graveyard uh, rather than activating it as a spell card. You might be wondering, why would that be better? Isn't this just way slower? Uh, the reason this would be better is because you can send it off of Rat Pierre, so uh, it becomes more accessible slash searchable slash whatever you want to say uh, instead of Avarice. Plus, the you know the actual trap card effect is like not completely irrelevant. Um, it's a very it can be rather a very nice way to not only stat boost one of your Xyz monsters, your Zodiac Xyz that may be getting battled into, you, but you could also like for example uh, attach a Whip Tail from deck to one of your monsters as it's getting attacked, and then. Uh, that monster will banish the opponent's monster. So, uh, it has applications. Um, and, again, the main one, though, being uh, sent off of Rat Pierre to recycle your stuff and then draw more cards. But, um, yeah, I think this deck is really consistent, which makes it very good. Um, it combines two powerful archetypes that can play separately and have their own one-card combos separately, which is also very good. Um, and it can also very easily main Dimension Shifter, which is an extremely good card in this meta. Um, I mean, Shifter is a good card in general. As a rule of thumb, if your deck can play Shifter, it probably always should be. But especially in this meta, uh, the graveyard matters a lot to pretty much every meta-relevant deck right now. So, um, yeah, this card's really, really good. Uh, Droll, also really, really good. Talent, also really, really good. And this deck mostly has in common... Or not in common. Um, well, actually, no, yeah. What, mostly what Zodiac and Kashira have in common with each other is their ability to play a lot of tools like this uh, that other decks might not have room for. And even when combining these two we actually do still have enough room for them. Um, you could even play more. Like, Tenki, you definitely do not have to play three Tenki. You could play... Honestly, Tenki is one of those cards where I could see pretty much any number between zero and three being correct. If you wanted to play more Disruption and Tech, uh, you could definitely put those in instead of Tenkis. I just found that in testing, there were some times where I was just like, okay, I just I really want a Zodiac monster <laughs> to be able to make like a Dryden or a Zeus here. So that's why I have three Tenkis as well as three Barrage. Tenki and Barrage also don't conflict with each other. You can Tenki to add a Zodiac to hand to normal summon later, then Barrage pop the Tenki for one to summon from deck. That immediately sets you up for a potential UDF, uh, UDF being Utopia Draco Future, if you want that. Um, also, on top of that, um, the Zodiac Barrage will probably still stick around on the field for the next turn. Um, which, again, uh, this deck can go into longer games very easily, so that can be very relevant much more easily than some other decks. But So yeah, overall, uh, this deck is good. It's very good. I think it's probably upper tier 3, um, if I had to guess. But uh, let's go ahead and see these games that we've got um, to kind of provide evidence for that. But actually, before we do, uh, let's break the list down card by card, and then we'll jump into those games. So, we are on two Draw and Lockbird, three Maxi, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, one Zodiac Rat Pierre, two Zodiac Whiptail, two Zodiac Thoroughblade, one Zodiac Ram Ram. This was actually one of the biggest ratios I was thinking of changing. I think a second Ram Ram would be... Uh, very much benefited, perhaps even over one Zodiac Cataroost, which is like, eh, it's fact hasn't really come up yet. It's an okay card. Uh, anyway, we're also playing one Cashier Rise Heart, two Dimension Shifter, two Cashier Fenrir, three Cashier Unicorn, one Nibiru the Primal Being, two Pot of Desires, two Triple Tactics Talent, one Cashier Theosis, one Pressured Planet Rate Soth, three Fire Formation Tenki, three Zodiac Barrage, one Cashier Birth, and then three Infinite Impermanence. Uh, and that'll be our main deck for the extra deck we are on. One number F0 Utopic Future, one number F0 Utopic Draco Future, which again, if you ever heard, uh, hear me refer to UDF, that is Utopic Draco Future. Uh, two Zodiac Tiger Mortar, two Zodiac Dryden, one Zodiac Borbo, one Zodiac Hammer Kong, two Zodiac Chakanine, one Drill Driver Vespinato, one Kashira Shangra Era, one Kashira Rice Heart, one Divine Arsenal, Ah, Zeus, Sky Thunder, and then finally one Donner Dagger for Hire. 
So that'll do it for our list. Let's see these games. All right, first game is gonna be up against Mathmech. Mathmech, uh, on this case, is on the Spirit Package. I didn't see any Firewall cards, so. We'll be going second here. Oh, these duels, by the way, were also all played live on stream. If you would like to check out these streams, I would highly implore you to uh, follow or sub at my Twitch, link in the description below. But So this was not honestly baffling to me. I would love to see my opponent's hand. I don't know what kind of a hand a math deck open where they can't play like anything at all, but um, definitely seems to be one that has a lot of disruption in it, as we are going to be immediately met with a Joel and Lockbird uh, as we use the Zodiac Thoroughblade effect, which is 100% fine, by the way, uh, especially with a hand like this. Now, to be fair, I don't think that Joel and Lock was, like, terrible, but at the same time, I don't really know, like, I, if you've got a hand, you're going to fire it off. I'm not faulting my opponent for activating the effect, but rather... Uh, I'm more making the point here that Joel Knock is not a card that's going to stop us a lot of the time. Um, if you only have Kashira plays, then it might. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got a Zodiac, you can normal summon in hand. You've always got plays, so. The Joel Knock will also allow me to triple attack and rip it from my opponent's hand and just uh, kind of see what's going on here. So, um, it went by a little bit quickly, a little more quickly than I intended. Um, and it looks like we do actually, in fact, get our wish of seeing the opponent's hand, by the way. Uh, the rest of it was Maxi, Maxi, Diameter, Thrust. And I'm like, that is 100% fine with me. Um, the Joel Mockbird... Actually, you know what? Now I can slightly criticize this Joel, this decision to Joel Mock instead of Maxi here. Like... I don't know, I feel like if you're up against a Zodiac deck, you you should know that they're going to want to stack a ton of Xyzes on top of each other. So, by activating Maxi, they would have forced me to kind of Dryden't pass here. Like, I don't even think I really would have made a Zeus, to be frank. Maybe one more draw for a Zeus instead of a Dryden would have been worth it. I might have done it, but... Um, yeah, as opposed to the Droll, which, yeah, they, they were able to use it when I Thoroughblade drew a card, but it's like... Even with my hand as is, I already don't plan on searching anymore this turn. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I really don't think this was a good play, but... I did kind of want to get into that a little bit sooner, but I was getting a little ahead of myself. Wanted to make sure we actually saw their hand before I uh, talked about it. So, I'm going to barrage for the other Thoroughblade here. Um, mostly so that I can end up going for a UDF plus Zeus line here. So... What I'm going to end up doing is going for the Chakanine to bring back the Ram Ram. Actually, I misplayed by using the Hammer Kong there. That was a misplay. Uh, that was not necessary for me to use that as a material under the Dryden. Although, to be fair... Well, no, it's going to go for UDF anyway. I was going to say, to be fair, it's it leaves my Dryden with 1600 attack. But again, we're just going to make Utopic Draco Future. Ah, uh, yeah, because I actually end up missing out on a material underneath my Zeus as a result. Is this only going to be a three material Zeus, I think? We got um, Thoroughblade and Borbo, and I think Tiger Border is the only other one I haven't summoned yet. Yeah, it is. So, uh, if I had not used Hammer Kong earlier... Well, actually, because of Whiptail, I end up having a four material Zeus anyway. But I could have had a four material Zeus without using the Whiptail in my hand by not putting Hammer Kong under the UDF, or rather under the Chalk Knight, which brought back the Ram Ram, but rather by saving it for the Borbo, yeah, which ended up going into the Zeus there, so. But I mean, still, you know, UDF plus Zeus, although I will say, this also still might not have been the best decision for me, because I know my opponent has Thrust in hand, right? So if I make their Thrust live, it's not that inconceivable at all that they could grab a talent off of it, and then I'm kind of fucked, almost no matter, well, not almost no matter what I activate. Basically, they could talent, and if I uh, had used, actually, it doesn't matter which one I use, they could talent, take my UDF, and then if I try to Zeus, and they can UDF to not only negate, but then also take my Zeus. So, this could end up backfiring very, very easily, um, very easily, but thankfully for me, it doesn't, they just concede here. So... Let's say my opponent had ripped a circular, right? If they had ripped circular... Hmm. Uh, okay, I actually have to think about this for a second. If they had ripped circular and activated the effect to bin a sigma, I would have let them summon it. 
Definitely don't negate just yet. Then, uh, I put back diameter, so I know they don't have that. So it would have to bring back sigma. Circular F proc. That's fine. I would allow that. They would have to overlay for alimbertion. At that point, I think I would need to UDF or Zeus. But then they could thrust and take probably the UDF. Uh, at which point, I would need the Zeus. Not that, not that triple attack targets, but basically if they activate the triple tactics talent, I have to fire off all of my Zeus materials to not only make sure that I don't get Zeus. Well, I guess they only take it for the turn though. Huh. But I would still need to fire off Zeus at least once to get rid of my UDF to make sure they don't, as I described earlier, talents take my UDF. And then when I go to Zeus later, they negate and then take my Zeus as well. So... Yeah, I think I figured that out right. Jesus. I, it involved a lot of hypothetical Yu-Gi-Oh! in my head where things can, can get a little bit more muddled, but I think that's how that would have had to have played out if they had actually been able to activate the thrust, which thankfully for us they didn't. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let's go ahead and see our next game here. Okay, our next game is going to be against a 60-card branded deck, and this one, this duel is going to be much more of a back and forth, so... It's going to be eight turns this game. I'm uh, going to start off by taking the first move here. So, draw phase here. I Or main phase, rather. Um, I am going to... Okay, this... I actually thought this game played out a little bit differently. I, th I was misremembering. I thought this was a game where I preempted Shifter, which I was about to say. But I can still talk about what happened here. So... Uh, I went normal summon Ram Ram, right? Opponent responded with the maxi. You'll note I did not throw out my Ash Blossom against it. Uh, the reason I did not Ash Blossom is because I want to Shifter my opponent. Um, I think that in this scenario, using Shifter is actually more valuable uh, than using maxi, or than using Ash Blossom against maxi. Because. With a hand like this, the only thing that Maxi is really stopping is having my Dryden uh, have more materials, right? Um, but, as you can see already, I'm, I'm moving to the end phase here, only giving my opponent the one draw. But, um, yeah, by ashing the Maxi to give my Dryden more materials, again, I lose out on my Shifter. And like I said in the profile, Shifter is such a strong card in this meta. It is so, so good that I definitely value it more than having more materials under my Dryden. Uh, the other nice thing too is that Dryden is no longer at one. So beforehand, when you had to do this line, turn one as a Zodiac player, right? Uh, they max you when you normal summon the Zodiac, so you have to make a one material Dryden. That would feel terrible. That felt awful when Dryden was at one. Now it's actually not that big of a deal. So. Um, in the past, if Dryden had been at 1, I actually might have considered using the Ash Blossom here. Um, but in this scenario, I'm just gonna let this resolve. They can draw one card, they can cycle the C, that's fine. Again, I'll go ahead and hang on to my Shifter here, so... Gonna end up throwing out the Shifter now, uh, because I want to pop the Fenrir with my Dryden. Uh, the reason that I'm popping Fenrir now uh, is so that they don't get to add, and that also, on top of that, they don't get to, well, you know, battle and then banish my Dryden and then just do that for free. So, um, they're going to summon a tier cash and mill me, um, which this whole, this whole turn for my opponent here, their first turn, makes me very, very glad I played things out the way that I did. Because, um, again, I just, I didn't think that having those extra materials under Dryden, because it's not like that means more pops. Dryden is, of course, uh, only going to be once per turn. So, but yeah, I just didn't value it that highly, and I'm very glad that I didn't. Very glad I didn't. I'll go ahead and use Tenki here, see if they have an Ash Blossom, maybe see if I can force something. Uh, even if not, I can still use the Thoroughblade to cycle the Rapier for a potentially more useful card, which I definitely got in the form of Barrage. I'm uh, going to use Barrage to pull out my other Thoroughblade, before moving into the Chaka Knight. As you can see here, I did not use my Hammer Kong uh, before going for this line because, again, I, I knew that I didn't need it. It's a bit debatable if I even should have gone for the Chaka Knight into Ram Ram here. Well, because here's the thing, right? I can't actually make the UDF because I don't have... I don't have a Zodiac Seize monster in my graveyard for Ram Ram to bring back, and if I try to pop Ram Ram, then it's going to end up getting banished, so... 
Uh, this is ultimately going to be a Dryden plus Zeus. I went into this line thinking I could UDF, but then I was like, oh yeah, Shifter. So, it's not that big of a deal. It's not hard to pivot here, though. Oh yeah, the Dryden I end up using preemptively here because I kind of figured I had to. Like, there wasn't really a way for me to use it without, like, uh... I don't know, it's like they could just move to battle phase and threaten to battle over it. It's like, I'm trying to remember actually, because there was a specific reason that I Dryden popped on my turn and not theirs. But I'm honestly struck. Oh, it was to just banish the tier cache instead of putting it in the graveyard. It, that's all it was. It was just that simple. But that doesn't matter. So here they do surprise me a little bit with an Albaz. Um, although we did, of course, preface this by saying, oh, we played against 60 card uh, Branded. Up to this point, I've only seen Fenrir, Tier Cash, and Shiren. So I thought it was just a 60 card uh, Tier Limit build. Granted, it's not that difficult to figure out. They're probably on Branded too, or at least they have a decent chance of being anyway. But um, yeah, we can just Zeus here. It's fine. Zeus gets Albaz off the field, which means it can't fuse. So. I was gonna set a card and then pass. I definitely do not feel the need to Zeus that one face down card um, because one, they're on a 60 card kind of turbo combo ish deck, so I'm not very scared of this being a very threatening back row. Two, because they are specifically on tier limit, it's very easy for that to be like a Soliac, which could just give them a free search for no reason if I Zeus tier. So. Uh, again, this turn, not gonna Zeus. Uh, the reason I'm not Zeusing this turn is, one, same things I said about the back row last time, uh, but two, even if I Zeus here, I can't summon 400 more attack points worth of stuff. They were at 3,400, right? Uh, which means I'm not able to OTK this turn either way, so I might as well just battle over the Quim, hang on to the board wipe through my opponent's turn, and again, not potentially give them a free search off of what could, what could be a face down Soliac. My opponent's drawing for turn, setting a monster, and then passing. This time I will use uh, Zeus during the end of phase here. Opponent's going to Havnus in response, but I'm going to use that other Ash Blossom I've been holding on to to make sure that Havnus stays in hand and does not end up milling or getting procced by the Zeus getting sent. And at this point, the opponent concedes. So, um, yeah, like I said, definitely more of a back-and-forth game than the previous one. I think this game also does highlight that um, even if your Zeus has multiple activations on it, you really got to be mindful, especially in situations like this, of how you use it. Um, which, yeah, as you can see, the opponent was definitely waiting for me to fire it off. Not even for what they had on the field, but for that Havness they had in hand. Um, but, yeah, thankfully we had that other Ash Blossom. Uh, definitely glad we had that other Ash Blossom. Also, once again, very glad I did not use that Ash Blossom against the Maxi. Uh, not hitting the Maxi with Ash Blossom is absolutely what won me this game here. Or at least what started the snowball of me winning the game. So, uh, there is that duel. Let's see the next one here. Okay, here we have another another good um, back and forth game. Uh, this time we're up against Sword Soul. I say that with a little bit of surprise because you don't really see much Sword Soul. Well, it's not like you don't see no Sword Soul nowadays. But we are, we have finally reached the era where unfortunately Sword Soul is just kind of starting to drop off uh, as a deck. Not even because it's bad, but because it got power crept, honestly. Alright, so um, here uh, you'll notice that my opponent started by normaling the Ecclesia. Uh, and then I chained specifically Shifter and then Maxi. You gotta do it in that order. Gotta do it in that order because um, Shifter has to have no cards in the graveyard as the activation condition, but Maxi puts itself in the graveyard as a cost, meaning if I Maxi'd first, I would not be able to Shifter. Um, however, I can do it the other way around because even though Maxi needs to go to the graveyard and Shifter banishes cards, uh, Shifter doesn't resolve until the chain link has resolved. Uh, it does not start banishing cards until the chain link has resolved. So uh, that means that it's not going to keep Maxi from activating as chain link too. Uh, pure the opponent has Ash Blossom, so just it doesn't matter anyway. But But we do manage to get the Shifter off, which even against a deck like Sword Soul, which I wouldn't call Sword Soul a Graveyard Reliant deck, uh, it is still definitely going to hurt them to not have their stuff go to the Graveyard there. 
Uh, it means no Protoss, it means no Taya, it means not banishing off of the Chi Shao. Also, by the way, I did not imperm the Moye, um, because I know I could just imperm the Chi Shao and it'd be fine. Uh, yeah, because Moye did not go to the graveyard, it does not draw them a card here. Now, granted, uh, they do get to get a free monster to get in. Okay, actually, now that I'm remembering it, the reason I let the Chi Shao summon go through is because I wasn't paying as close attention to the game as I should be. I was talking to Chad, and I didn't... I, I totally slipped my mind that they had Ash Blossom to my maxi, but it's not that big of a deal either way. It does mean they get a monster effect negate here. Which means I have to play this a little bit weirdly, um, because I know they can negate, they still have a Vishu in hand, they can banish off the Chi Shao. So what I'm going to do here, right, is I'm going to Special Thin Rear and activate the effect, and really hope that they negate it. Uh, if they negate it, then I can use Triple Tactics Talent. Uh, well, either way, oh my god, actually, because I was going to say to steal their Chi Shao, but it's like I would draw two here, when I, it's not what I was thinking of doing. Yeah, Fenrir, they, oh, they don't end up negating. I'm going to move to battle phase and try to attack with the Fenrir. That's right, that's right. I remember I remember my thought process now. I was like, okay, I can Fenrir and activate the effect to try to add. If they Chi Shao and negate it, I can sell talent to draw to you. I was going to draw to you and see if I just ripped a Zodiac monster. Which sounds like, oh, you're just trying to top deck a card. But remember, we have not only all of the Zodiac monsters, but also three Barrage, three Tenki, and Desires. My odds of drawing a Zodiac monster off the top two cards are not bad at all. And the other thing I was thinking was like, okay, if they don't negate, then I can move to battle with the Fenrir, and they negate that, and then I don't have a monster on the field, and then I can summon Unicorn and go into Kashira plays. Uh, here they end up having the Imperm, which I expect them to negate with Chi Shao, but that's actually not really going to change what my strategy is here moving forward. I'm still going to battle through with the Fenrir. Uh, well, I have to. I don't have a chance to do a replay there, but I'm still going to summon and activate Unicorn. They'll activate Chi Shao, banishing the Vishuda to negate, um, but now I get to triple attack and draw to and see if I can just rip a Zodiac monster. Which, again, I have pretty good odds to. Except they have Ash Blossom! Ah! That was our last card! Ah, that was our last card was the Ash Blossom. Again, my odds of ripping that were so good. And you might be thinking, well, Hex, you could have taken control of this and linked into Donner, but... Which I did actually consider doing. Oh my god, that's right, they ripped the Desires, which is one of the cards I was trying to rip, to be fair. But it's like, I could have done that, but... I think that play to steal Chi Shao and link Chi Shao and Unicorn into um, exactly Donner is only correct if I assume their last card is Ash Blossom, which in that situation, no, you should not assume their last card is Ash Blossom. Also, this was very scary. Um, they went for the Ecclesia and I chained a Maxi. I'm like, okay. At least they get a bunch of draws here, and at least I can feasibly try to come back here if they're going to try to combo off of this Ecclesia. But instead they go straight for the Iris Sword Soul, which is very, very bad for me because now ripping a Zodiac monster is not enough. Once I summon from the extra deck, they can just use the Iris Sword Soul effect. Also, <laughs> how lucky was it for my opponent to have not banished the Iris Sword Soul with Desires. Like, I was flabbergasted, in a good way, honestly. I wasn't, like, mad or anything, but I was like, damn, good for them. They not only play the Iris Sword Soul, which is the perfect out here, but they also did not banish it off of the Desires. That was like, yeah, I was definitely not expecting to see Fleurdalis come out after the uh, Ecclesia activated there, so. As you can see, I even did it. I even ripped the Zodiac monster. Also, I think these would have been my two top decks off of talent, right? Theosis and Whiptail? Which, again, would have gotten me that Zodiac monster for the uh, Chi Shao out. Now, here, I'm going to make Dryden anyway, and just, like, pop their Chi Shao anyway. Uh, and be like, just, just kind of hope they don't top anything. And they top deck a Sacred Summit, which is, like, uh, not like the end of the game, but it's definitely still not looking good for me here. Alright, opponent's going to set a card, passing back to me. Honestly, yeah, I was going to say, e e there's like nothing I can even really top deck anymore at this point. Except maybe for like Fenrir? But don't they have... No, they only have a Klesia in their graveyard, right? They don't actually have a Sword Soul or a Worm in their graveyard. I only had the one Fenrir left in deck, but actually... 
Yeah, no, well, okay, what does Iris do when you summon from hand? I have to look at that first, actually. <laughs> um, where was it? Here we go. Oh, yeah, special month, whatever. That's, yeah, that's obviously not a problem. So, yeah, if I had ripped exactly Fenrir, that would have been an out, but... I didn't, so it wasn't. But uh, yeah, that was a that was great draws for my opponent there. The desires into yeah, just the outs in general, into the Ecclesia, into the Iris in response to my Maxi. Yeah, it was good stuff. That was a very good back and forth. GG's for sure, opponent. But um, yeah, we got one more duel to check out. Let's go into that here. All right, last game for this here video is gonna be against Labyrinth. Labyrinth, Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Oh, uh, this is gonna be another fairly short one, but. We'll check it out all the same here. Uh, gonna be taking the first turn and opening the most Zodiac hand ever of one Zodiac monster and four pieces of disruption, so. Uh, I'll send Ram Ram off of Rap here if I don't have anything else to send. Uh, to set it up in the graveyard. Actually, wait, no, this is a UDF line. Um, yeah, because I can Rap here set up Ram Ram in the graveyard. So yeah, Rap here by itself is a UDF. Um, also, again, uh, this was before I fully realized, like, oh, Going into Hammer Kong on the Shock and Nine there is totally unnecessary and waste a Nixie's material for future Dridents and Zeus's. So, uh, this is how you summon a Utopic Draco future on turn one. Just don't use the Hammer Kong first, like I did. You don't need to do that. Yep, there is the regular F Zero. Um,. Oh yeah, here my opponent threw out their furniture right before I, I could get off my Utopic Draco future. Thankfully, I do get to cycle one of my extra Maxi here because they're summoning the Lady Labyrinth. Triple attack, very, very good draw here. I debated really hard whether or not I wanted to draw two or hand rip with this triple attack. I think I ended up hand ripping because I didn't really know, I didn't really think rather there was going to be another card I could draw. Yeah, it's not like... like there's really anything too impact like in draw here. Call by an extra. I'll put back the extra. It's like yeah, I didn't want to put a situation where I ripped like Fenrir Theos and couldn't do anything with them. But uh, also definitely playing my Imperm directly across from the big Welcome Lab. So uh, the Lady Labyrinth is only protected from being targeted or destroyed while your opponent controls a set card, or while whoever controls Lady Lab controls a set card, right? So as soon as they flip up their big Welcome Lab, this can be targeted again, which means I can negate it with the Imperm, uh, which also means I can negate the big Welcome Lab directly across from it. Now, to be fair, I did misplay this here. I should have waited for my opponent to use Lady Lab's effect in response to their own big Welcome, because Lady Lab can use the last effect here in response to me flipping up Imperm. So I, I, I shot the gun a little bit too early there. Was a bit of a misplay on my part. It's, it doesn't really matter, though, because I can just steal with UDF. So so here, it actually did not make a difference. But if I did not have Utopic Draco Future on the field, it would have made a difference. So, And then, yeah, we just went out from there. Like I said, this was just going to be another very short duel. Um, but I still wanted to highlight it to show um, the interaction there with the Lady Lab. Um, and also particularly how the uh, Utopic Draco Future came in clutch. Also showing off that rap here is a Utopic Draco Future by itself. Uh, you just summon the rap here, send the Ram Ram from Graveyard, uh, overlay your Chalcanine on top of rap here, detach rap here, bring back Ram Ram. Then you can put Dryden on top of Chalcanine, Dryden, detach Chalcanine to pop ram 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 f bring back chalk nine and then boom f zero uh, again you do not need to go into hammer kong first like i did that was a misplay but uh yeah that's gonna go ahead and do it for these games uh again now that all has been said and done after these couple of playtest sessions i am very confident that zodiac is an upper tier three deck that's where i personally would put it but what about you all definitely do not be afraid to let me know in the comments below that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video though so let's move now to our uh outro all right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer 
offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So, all in all, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.